The recording is in progress. Thank you very much, Andrew. So, oh, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is now week 31 of the Indigenous Global Unity Summit event. Um, we have a guest speaker that's go going to hopefully be on the line. Uh, I'm just looking right now. Uh, Nicholas is his name. Um, don't see him yet, but hopefully he will be coming in. Uh, he's from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, we'll be talking about the conflicts there. Uh, but today, again, I will open up, uh, I'll share my screen as we usually do. Let's see if I can do this. The show, share here. And hopefully again, everybody can see my screen. Just give me a, a, a okay and I will get going. Uh, as always, uh, I do uh, start this presentation uh, with a land acknowledgement, uh, which I will do now. Um, so we begin today uh, by acknowledging that we walk upon the traditional territories of Indigenous peoples and we recognize their history, spirituality, culture, and stewardship of the land. We're grateful to all Indigenous groups for their commitment to protect the land and its resources, and we're committed to reconciliation, partnership, and intense understanding. We acknowledge the land we're meeting on here in the greater Toronto area uh, is the traditional territory of the many nations, including Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Anishinaabe peoples, and is now home to many diverse peoples. We'd also like to acknowledge the land we're on is at the meeting place of two treaties, the lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit and those of the First Nations of the Williams Treaty. We also thank them and other Indigenous people for sharing this land with us. Uh, we also acknowledge and recognize all of the world's Indigenous peoples as stewards of Mother Earth. Uh, so as we begin today, um, as always, I start uh, the presentation by giving recognition to our supporters and sponsors, uh, in particular, always Andrew Networks, uh, which has replaced Edfu Foundation as our primary sponsor for the Global Unity Network weekly uh, Zoom calls that we have, um, which will now last through December 29th, 2022. Uh, so Andrew Networks uh, will also be rebroadcasting uh, uh, any production ready episodes on the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board, Goodwill Ambassadors, Ayagba.org domain, uh, which is being redirected to the ucit.tv site as well. I just do the chat window here. Uh, so you see logos on this page, um, the, amount, the, the uh, Maui Aloha Project, the Five Points Youth Foundation, uh, the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Goodwill Ambassadors, the Future Lift Foundation, the Global Women's Development Network, Global Peace Let's Talk, the Community Development Foundation, the American International Education Federation, the Edfu Foundation, and uh, a number of other ones as well. Uh, so I will put in chat if you for people to see. Um, so as we move forward, um, I wanted to let you know Andrew Networks is now our primary sponsor uh, supporting the Global Unity Network Initiative um, through now December 29th, 2022, uh, with Andrew Networks being the uh, organization that donates our hosting and promotional support services. Uh, Andrew Networks being a brand and a domain name owned by RXTC Export Trading Company, comprising of various social media channels, including TRN TV, Universal Citizens Media Networks, Conversations with Andrew Williams Jr., and many more. So Andrew uh, is uh, also the founder of the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Goodwill Ambassadors, Advocates and Activists, uh, which was created in September 2019 uh, with a focus on localizing the sustainable development goals during this decade of action on delivery of the SDGs, uh, which lasts from 2020 to 2030. 
uh, Andrew also appointed me as ad hoc international advisory board uh, representative for Canada, uh, La Francophonie and the Commonwealth of Nations countries, uh, which was originally published on January 1st, 2020. Um, and later Turtle Island uh, was added to my portfolio as well. So I am uh, Lloyd Halfordy, uh, the Chief Ecosystem Director and Program Development Director, Sustainable Society Consultant for Energon University. Uh, I'm here in Canada, well, Energon University in New York uh, is a private company created to help empower global populations to reestablish a sustainable balance to our local environments. Uh, Energon does this by designing and implementing projects that support a strong diversified local economy while integrating more sustainable technologies and infrastructure into communities in the areas of renewable energy, high density food growth, managing local waste streams and protecting local water resources. Uh, Energy is actually supported by over 375 companies whose products and technologies they employ. Uh, importantly, Energy University supports local education and training in the construction, deployment, and maintenance of the various integrated solutions for achieving closed loop systems that in turn support self sufficient, sustainable communities. So, the Energyme Global Cooperation Turtle Island Organization, uh, I am the co founder and administrator of. Uh, we are a civil society organization seeking to undertake something called life value peace education, uh, which is done in the context of what are called life learning gardens. So as we move forward, uh, we are creating what are what is called the Global Union Network, uh, but we are doing it through a network uh, called the Goodwill Ambassador Network. Um, which was created by the Five Points Youth Foundation in Los Angeles originally uh, with a portfolio, my portfolio that covers Canada, like Francophonie, the Commonwealth of Nations and Turtle Island communities. Uh, so I am a member of this ad hoc international advisory board of goodwill ambassadors and activists. As we are seeking to empower our communities to engage with royal indigenous and tribal leadership, as well as interfaith neighborhood and business collaboratives. Uh, which we are now calling interfaith neighborhood academic and business collaboratives uh, which are seeking to leave no one behind so uh, i am uh, as well co-founder of the global unity business group uh, which came together as a coalition of small businesses in order to establish and manage this uh, global unity network um, the Global Unity Business Group being a humanitarian enterprise and Global Sustainable and Regenerative Development Corporation uh, supporting and promoting the local delivery of what are called open source regenerative climate smart infrastructure solutions set up as life learning gardens, along with a hybrid virtual learning platform uh, we call the VCN or the Interchange for Peace. The Global Unity Business Group uh, created in order to formalize this process of localization of the global goals, starting with the sustainable development goals, uh, is being, being done by the establishment of this global unity network, uh, which includes uh, Unity Gardens Network, Unity Learning Network, and many other dedicated unity networks, all being important components of this uh, network of networks, as we call it. <laughs> So the Global Unity Network um, is, was created to showcase global cooperation um, for the implementation of the global local regenerative solutions to achieving the global goals, starting with those 17 sustainable development goals. Um, our goal is to help uplift uh, traditionally marginalized communities uh, that are mostly being left behind uh, because the, the existing economic paradigm is very much focused on making money or extracting wealth from those who are already wealthy uh, and therefore the majority of people on earth are mostly being ignored uh, by our existing highly competitive economy. Our focus is thus on the billions of people who exist or subsist 
on the economic sidelines, uh, where we intend to start our work by delivering solutions for people and communities in the least developed economies, countries, and communities uh, that are most food insecure. Um, so the Global Unity Network promoting the delivery of practical solutions to achieving uh, the global goals, uh, starting with the sustainable development goals um, during this SDG period until 2030. We use the tools of humanitarian entrepreneurship focusing on what we call FFHE or female and feminist humanitarian entrepreneurs and enterprises. Uh, we also use a hybrid virtual and hands-on education and training uh, and learning program and platform system with the primary focus on the delivery of this humanitarian entrepreneurship skills training uh, in these practical settings, uh, also called practical learning, uh, leveraging the open source regenerative climate smart infrastructure solutions to remotely assist local uh, interfaith neighborhood business and academic collaborative teams to establish local open source unity garden classrooms in all of the local communities around the world. Uh, so the unity garden classrooms are being set up in conjunction with existing schools in local communities uh, can be used for the local and remote delivery of these practical learning programs for the FFHE to learn how to grow, process, cook, market, sell, and trade the various types of regenerative climate smart food and related nutritional and medicinal and other types of locally produced regenerative products, both within their own local communities, as well as regionally, nationally, continentally, and even internationally in order to produce income and therefore a greater prosperity for all the people on all the continents uh, with the intention of leaving uh, no one behind. So the, at the same time, uh, we are also promoting uh, through our virtual social marketing, all of the members of our network uh, using the various practical social media networking and trade tools of the modern fourth industrial revolution, uh, combined with the deep indigenous knowledge of both our ancestors uh, and the living indigenous people of the earth in order to share the abundance of this planet, uh, to learn from each other, in order to create productive regenerative climate smart landscapes wherever we may live uh, in and around all of our local communities with our intention being uh, to help restore nature and biodiversity and ensure abundance for all ultimately to restore the human connection to mother earth as proper stewards of our one and only uh, beautiful planet So uh, one of the tools we use, the Global Unity Network, uses a virtual collaborative network, a uh, hybrid learning model uh, delivered through both the Unity Gardens uh, for the hands-on experiential practical learning, as well as through what's called the digital VCN that bundles all of the various functions of individual websites into a single site or collaborative portal that allows all of these uh, digital to virtual learning to be delivered uh, alongside the place where e-commerce can also take place. Uh, in other words, it's an all-in-one platform for trade, commerce, and learning bundled into a single platform. Uh, the VCN uses what's called a digital collaborator engine uh, intended to turbocharge the networking, exchange, trade, and education delivery capabilities of and for the members of the network. Uh, it's also called a PXN or partnership, uh, partner exchange ecosystem. Um, with the digital collaboration technology, helping organizations in six areas of digital transformation uh, around leadership, uh, strategy, customer intimacy, uh, business service design, agile transformation, uh, and health check analysis for their organizations. So we believe the BCN platform can help every organization become an agile organization for the 21st century, helping them to move beyond this current health pandemic uh, the VCN being intended to as a stepping stone toward this new vision for the internet called the metaverse, uh, which has a lot of attention recently, of course, with the renaming of Facebook uh, with this new corporate name Meta, which of course refers to metaverse and that uh, basic concept. 
So uh, the business group, uh, we are managing the Global Unity Network geographically, uh, helping to create globalized country, regional and continental unity net, global business development networks, uh, which serve to manage the local and community networks, uh, along with regional and continental unity network organizations that organize themselves according to the concepts and principles of sociocracy. Uh, so we assist communities on, in each country to establish uh, local and regional community engagement teams called INAB collaboratives or INAB collaboratives, interfaith neighborhood academic and business collaboratives uh, with the primary purpose of both business and network to promote our ad hoc international advisory board of goodwill ambassador process of globalization of the global goals specifically by promoting processes that help local communities establish partnerships as per SDG 17 that will support local humanitarian entrepreneurs who are dedicated to implementing the various local regenerative community-based enterprise solutions for achieving the global goals. So our global unity network, uh, the main purpose of the Global Unity Network, really uh, the country chapters, is essentially to use this ad hoc international advisory board uh, process of globalization of the global goals. Uh, it's a specific community engagement process to assist local communities to establish local, regional, interfaith, neighborhood, academic, and business collaboratives um, in each local community according to this multi-stakeholder heptamatrix partnership template that we have. The partnership between Drawdown Markham uh, as a CSO and the Five Points Youth Foundation NGO was done through the We Energize Global Cooperation Turtle Island International Civil Society Organization, whose mandate was to deliver uh, life value peace education uh, within the context of the Life Learning Gardens, uh, also called Unity Gardens. Uh, so the, under this framework of cooperation, rather than just looking at individual projects on a one-by-one -one basis, the Global Unity Network is being created to establish a support network that will help establish local support networks of professionals in each local community where the projects are to be implemented. Uh, so ultimately assessments of projects are not to be done by people who are remote to the projects, but rather by trusted people who are closest to, the, to these projects, uh, including the beneficiaries, uh, especially those who are currently the most marginalized in the community. So the goal is being to support and uplift people in marginalized communities uh, through the delivery of learning programs, this practical hands-on education and training, and to promote all of the youth and female and feminist humanitarian entrepreneurs around the world who either have or wish to implement replicable regenerative solutions for achieving the global goals, starting with the sustainable world goals. Uh, we focus on regenerative solutions that can be localized uh, one community at a time, starting the least developed countries, communities, and economies by working with the people who have been most forgotten and marginalized with the intention of leaving no one behind. So our philosophy is that machines are not the economy. Uh, people doing things is what makes an economy. And so if we can lift people from poverty or better, better yet, empower them to lift themselves from poverty, we'll have automatically injected life into the global economy. So the goal of the network is uplifting in the bottom billions. Um, the ultimate goal teaching people how to feed themselves the climate smart way. Uh, we rethink that the old of the old saying, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. The global unity network is about teaching the women and youth to fish uh, so they no longer need to be fed the next day when they're hungry again. So the focus is on promoting and demonstrating only open source solutions as in open source regenerative climate smart food growing infrastructure uh, set up as unity garden classrooms at and with schools, including universities, colleges, high schools. Um, and I can of course send anybody who wishes to read more a four page document that describes the global unity network in more detail. But I wanted to mention specifically today, uh, the CTP program for building our holistic regenerative climate smart communities. Uh, so, um, in order to, we're, we're bringing this together uh, 
in order to enable local management of an adaptation to long-term social, economic, and planetary impacts uh, and create legacy forests for people, by biodiversity and the planet, uh, secure energy and food security and resources, uh, climate resilience, poverty alleviation, uh, aiming to implement both rural and urban holistic sustainable uh, infrastructure as appropriate along with the related SDG education and training programs, especially for youth educators and decision makers of all kinds, uh, also coordinating commemorative tree plantings as part of the 400th anniversary uh, and 800th anniversary Tree of Peace and Reconciliation ceremony initiatives that are taking place uh, in cities around the world. So the Tree of Peace and Reconciliation uh, tree plantings, uh, one of which took place here in Canada, uh, we're a precursor to ongoing tree plantings as part of the social enterprise agreement with Reef Forest Nation, uh, which is working closely with Plant for the Planet, uh, which intends uh, to Lloyd, plant just, a trillion trees. Yes. Lloyd, just a question. Um, your slide, <clears throat> one slide has been there for the last several minutes. Mm -hmm. Were you intending to proceed or just is that the slide you want right now? Yeah, I think I, think I may have... Uh, messed up the order of my presentation so i'm just trying to trying to catch up here i think i, I didn't put it in perfect order today unfortunately <laughs> um so anyway uh we are supporting of course the work uh, in partnership with the unity programs of the unity this global unity network uh, organizations uh, that have been established and continue to be established around the world uh, that deliver these projects uh, campaigns and events uh, such as the Tree of Peace and Reconciliation tree planting ceremonies, uh, the Sunlight Spectacle virtual entertainment events and shows, along with the Indigenous Global Year Summit events, uh, which are, of course, happening now, uh, we, which were intended originally to take place until Africa Day, uh, but will now take place until the end of next, or this year, I should say, um, as well as these coordinated international bubble fund festivals, um, where we are working in support and expansion of the global women's development network as well. So, I wanted to indicate as well that uh, we are supporting and promoting uh, the local delivery of open source uh, regenerative uh, climate smart infrastructure set up as life learning gardens designed for delivery of these hands-on practical learning programs supporting all manner of life value uh, peace education um, those uh, unity garden uh, infrastructure includes csv gardens uh, victory forests climate smart kitchens spark learning centers or uh, climate smart education and training centers along with what are called wheel of life farm schools So the uh, projects uh, of our network include what are called sacred site and watershed mapping, uh, the CTP program, which I mentioned earlier, or collaborative tree planting initiative for twinning communities, along with collaboration for the development of a system of payments of for ecosystem services or for certified climate smart products that help to permanently sequester carbon and that are made by humanitarian enterprises that are helping to implement local solutions for achieving these global goals, starting with the SDGs. Uh, some of our other key campaigns include a dream boards in every community campaign uh, to establish local community dream boards, where we help to mobilize the youth to help turn their dreams into reality, along with a tea diplomacy initiative that connects local farmers, growers, and entrepreneurs across geographies and among members of communities that may not otherwise ever get a chance to talk to each other and get to know each other as people. So the idea being to sit down, even if only virtually, have tea, relax, and discuss local solutions to global problems like food security, hunger, climate change, the environment, peace, security, and the well-being of people in the environments in each of our own local communities. Uh, people who participate would also discuss what kinds of teas they like to drink, what healthy foods they like to eat, uh, while drinking the tea uh, and discuss what unique teas they, they grow in their own local communities or region, 
uh, and the importance of these teas to the local people and cultures. So uh, our first uh, continental network, uh, Unity Network Development Network, uh, the uh, Unity Net Africa and Diaspora, um, it's intended to be a safe place for cooperative discussion with others in the Global Unity Network as we develop a continental network uh, for all the people of Africa and for eventual replication across all the countries uh, worldwide, uh, starting with the least developed countries, communities and economies or the LDCCEs. So the initial board of directors from the African Continental Network is listed on the slide, um, but I wanted to mention some new board members uh, confirmed uh, as an official advisory board. Um, so the people who have done that include Carlos Richard Sanco from Unity Net uh, Sierra Leone as the new Continental President and Dr. Mary Ifianyi from Nigeria in the West Africa region as the new vice continental president. Uh, Sierra Leone uh, being one of the oldest global unity network chapters with 10 trees of peace and reconciliation already planted in communities across the country, uh, serving as a precursor for the creation of the local uh, INAB collaboratives and the establishment of the unity garden classroom infrastructure. So the new board of directors of Unity Net Africa and Diaspora was put together in a way to try to represent the six regions of Africa and the selection process made an attempt to achieve gender balance of the board by ensuring that half of the board members and leaders were women as per SDG five gender equality. Uh, so this team is working in cooperation with the existing global unity network country chapters in Africa to create a model for the development of a continental and regional network of networks by working with the grassroots people in the country chapters. So the African model, uh, we hope to eventually replicate in order to create country chapters in all 55 country or African nations, um, also liaising with the African Union. But the African success story, uh, not to, being just for Africa, will also be for other continents and countries around the world, uh, where we focus our efforts as always on the least developed countries, communities, and economies uh, in the communities that are being furthest left behind, uh, again, as per LNOB. So I wanted to mention social media. Uh, we are planning uh, to link the North American uh, Turtle Island and African agendas across time and space uh, by linking our programs together in a way that makes sense by developing what we're calling this reverse CTP program modeled on the original CTP program developed by Trotta and Mark in late 2019. Uh, the business group has its home in Canada, uh, but with, we have strong support and involvement from especially Sierra Leone, Kenya, and US, uh, USA. Um, I'd like for everyone on this call today, of course, to consider joining one of our uh, groups that's also critical to the Global Unity Network, including the Global Unity Network social media discussion uh, that's been created by the business group, uh, which is, of course, a humanitarian enterprise and global uh, sustainable and regenerative development corporation supporting and promoting uh, the local delivery of open source regenerative climate smart infrastructure set up as life learning gardens or unity gardens. So I'd like to mention. Uh, other critical nodes uh, of the Global Unity Network, including the Regenerative Living, Learning, and Lifestyle Network, uh, the Unity Learning Network, the Health Network, the Eco Village Network, um, the uh, Indigenous Global Unity Network, as well as the Unity Environment Network and the Biodiversity Network, um, in addition to the Peace Centers Network, the Children and Youth Network, the Smart Communities and Cities Network, the Social Business Network, the Climate Smart Tourism Network aligning with the Tourism for SDGs uh, agenda, the Women and Feminist Network for our humanitarian entrepreneur business owners and managers, um, as well as recently the Unity Water Network designed to address all of the various water sustainability issues that are related to the achievement of the global goals uh, as we attempt to transition to a regenerative economy that leaves no one behind. 
again, I am putting uh, some information into the chat for you to join uh, these networks. So I want to mention the Global Unity Network is actually being created to promote everyone equally uh, who's willing to work together with us uh, in solidarity toward the achievement of the global goals, uh, not just for the success of their own business uh, with the Global Unity Network. Uh, the health of people and planet um, is placed front and center. Uh, the first purpose of the Global Unity Network being uh, to help establish a global network of local INAB collaboratives uh, so the INAP Collaboratives uh, is this new name, Interfaith Neighborhood Academic and Business Collaboratives, uh, which is being done as per this Heptamatrix partnership template, which you're seeing on the screen right now. So the Global Unity Network uh, has a very specific focus on one specific area of development, which is hybrid, virtual, and hands-on practicum education and training in the context of uh, and for regenerative development solutions of which we intend to assist people in local communities to build and demonstrate at least one of the five different regenerative climate smart infrastructure solutions in their own local communities in collaboration with the existing local learning institutions. So it's intended that these unity garden solutions will at minimum be able to address two of the sustainable development goals, SDG 2 zero hunger, and SDG 13 climate action. Uh, thus, we're building a global unity network that cuts across all areas of humanitarian entrepreneurship, learning uh, as they relate to the implementation of the various local solutions for achieving the global goals, and that relate to the, or even more specific goal of climate smart food uh, and regenerative development solutions that help humanity to move beyond the sustainable development goals uh, into, into a new era of regenerative development. Um, however, that might be defined post-2030. So we are starting the conversation now, uh, about eight years ahead of the inevitable transition to the next phase of the global goals uh, post-2030, where the SDGs are just the second phase of a thousand-year millennium development project uh, to achieve peace on Earth uh, in a way that leaves no one behind. And where the larger uh, millennium development uh, project intends that all of humanity can be uplifted and empowered to achieve their highest potential. So you're seeing on this uh, seemingly complicated graphic, uh, the Unity Network Africa and Diaspora as the first continental network or chapter of the Global Unity Network. Uh, the continental chapters are being created in order to facilitate the establishment of country chapters of the Global Unity Network on the specific continent or geographical jurisdiction where the continental chapter has responsibility. So the country chapters are being created in order to facilitate the establishment of these local INAB collaboratives, the Interfaith Neighborhood Academic and Business Collaboratives at the local level in each community, uh, which is the level where we're leveraging our process of community engagement through these planting of trees of peace and reconciliation uh, the coordinated bubble fund festivals done in collaboration with the uh, Greater Unity Network members, specifically the PodNet cooperative members, uh, the CTP program for twinning community uh, activities uh, for community or organized tree planting and other local regenerative uh, community infrastructure development projects and events, uh, the T Diplomacy Initiative, as, as described earlier the Dream Boards Initiative uh, done in collaboration with C4 group members, uh, identification and engagement of the local talent, uh, artists and creative people in the orange economy for the purpose of promoting and showcasing their talent, especially uh, with regard to the globalization of the global goals uh, and the regenerative economy uh, during any periodic sunlight spectacle and other edutainment events. Um, along with other programs or activities that may be developed in the context of the CSV gardens, the Victory Forests, the Climate Spark Kitchens, the Wheel of Life Farms, uh, and the Spark Learning Centers, or the, the Climate Spark Learning Centers. Uh, I wanted to note the, the Unity Gardens of the Global Unity Network encourage co-learning or intercultural collaboration in what is called 2 eyed seeing where the Unity Gardens are places where children, especially 
they are taught that no one is being or no one being is greater than the next, that we are part and parcel of the whole and equal, that each one of us has a responsibility to the balance of the system and an understanding that all of the world's species and all of our bio and eco kin have contributions to make. So I wanted to as well show uh, or post an, a link to Du Aizing or Etwa Mok guiding principle for intercultural collaboration, uh, which is at the uh, website in the chat. So the Global Unity Network, again, focusing on smaller scale, community-based and regenerative solutions that can be implemented by small holders and local communities, including in rural areas, as well as in cities, urban areas, uh, when the, where the programs of the Global Unity Network are also focused on community engagement for the development of local partnerships uh, to establish and maintain these local uh, interfaith neighborhood academic and business collaboratives, as well as for the purpose of bringing the best practitioners onto the platform who are able to teach people uh, about establishing this regenerative infrastructure uh, that they need, both in terms of the digital and the hands-on classrooms that will allow for the efficient delivery of the learning programs this practical education and training of this open source solutions for achieving uh, both zero hunger and climate action at the local level, especially for those who are most marginalized in each of our own local communities. So our local team here in Toronto is establishing uh, the Greater Toronto Area Unity Network or Unity Net GTA uh, through a partnership that is being developed again, through the We Energy and Global Cooperation Turtle Island International Civil Society Organization, in order to create an Indigenous Global Unity Network um, that will deliver programs of practical reconciliation with Indigenous communities and their allies around the world for the purpose of healing our planet, restoring biodiversity, and ensuring social integrity, one community at a time. So we are doing this by looking through the lens of implementing the various solutions for achieving the global goals locally, starting with the local implementation of Sustainable Development Goal, SDG, um, during this UN decade of ecosystem restoration. Uh, we're also starting the development of a Greater Toronto and Area Urban Food and Farming Expo Network that will focus on the development of local regenerative climate smart food supply chain ecosystem here in the GTA uh, by establishing a virtual urban farming network for the various local smart and fair trade products that will be certified as regenerative climate smart and which at minimum can help to tackle SDG 2, zero hunger and SDG 13 climate action one meal at a time, uh, where intention is also to leave no one behind as we can teach uh, people, teach others how to implement these new regenerative economy solutions, uh, not only here in Canada, but also around the world. Uh, through these partnerships, uh, again, as per SDG 17. So I wanted to mention as well, uh, on November 27th last year, we established two new discussion groups within the Global Unity Network, including the uh, Global Unity 4K Clubs Network, uh, established with uh, Susan uh, Yego from Kenya and Ambassador uh, Ifanyi Salanke from Nigeria, uh, where the women will begin to organize the development of some standard learning modules that can be customized and aligned to the local school curriculum uh, and delivered in the context of the Unity Gardens by members and partners of the local INAP collaboratives that have been established in each local community with the local or the unity network continental country and regional chapters have been established so i wanted to, to again bring to the chat some information about the uh, global unity or a clubs network so i wanted to mention as well we have then initiated a preliminary discussion about the establishment of tukitana ev canada an NGO organization uh, which will be delivering the Tukitane Women Empowerment Project or program, as they call it uh, here in Canada, uh, via lo our local CSOs or our INAP collaboratives, 
established for the purpose of delivering this uh, Global Unity 4K Club learning programs that help to uplift young uh, people and FFHGs internationally uh, or sorry, intergenerationally and across geographies uh, in order to help bridge the gap between urban and rural and achieve SDG 1, 2, and 3 uh, through SDG 4, uh, so quality education through partnerships. So Tutitani EV Canada uh, also assisting our colleagues in Germany uh, to establish a UnityNet continental chapter in Europe, uh, which will focus their efforts on supporting homeless and displaced people, uh, such as economic conflict and climate migrants. But the noise there. <laughs> So uh, coming back to the CTP program, uh, these were many, so many things that I added today. Uh, the Global Unity Network uh, was originally created to support the collaborative tree planting program, uh, which is now being rejigged to this reverse CTP program, ideally to support the establishment of a global network of eco-villages populated by our humanitarian entrepreneurs. Uh, but we are looking again, as I mentioned, beyond the sustainable development goals to the post 2030 period of time uh, when we, humanity, uh, will be needing to put huge effort into restoring our relationship and balance with nature, uh, probably undertaking rather massive ecosystem restoration activities at the same time, uh, if we're going to survive the, both climate change and the massive ecosystem degradation and biodiversity loss that is ongoing. Our goal is to establish the physical and virtual infrastructure that will allow people in every community uh, on earth to learn how to implement some of these local solutions themselves, uh, which is really the rationale for our hybrid approach and why we're promoting open source hardware solutions that are not constrained by patents and other IP limitations. So as mentioned earlier in this presentation, uh, we are supporting the, what we call LTCCEs, people in least developed countries, communities, and economies. Uh, also in discussions with an entrepreneur who's planting, planning to undertake a pilot project of what's called a guaranteed income system, specifically for poor and marginalized people, especially in rural communities. Uh, the GIS system uh, should be a complementary income support system for those who are most marginalized in our community. Uh, the approach of the Global Unity Network projects is not to help people directly, uh, by going into these people's communities and doing things for them, our approach is to deliver hybrid learning programs that allow local people to implement the solutions that we're introducing and showcasing themselves as much as possible uh, by providing a facility that allows people around the world to also bypass many of the top-down and colonial financing systems like the World Bank and IMF that were establishing or that were established so many decades ago. Um, ultimately, uh, we, it will be the local people in each local community, region, or country that will need to take advantage of and utilize this knowledge and tools that we provide. Um, we can do, do our best. Uh, of course, no guarantees. Local people in local communities um, may end up in, in a place where they end up, uh, but given the highly motivated, very careful, uh, very caring people in our network, uh, these humanitarian entrepreneurs um, we are working with. I have confidence that the people in our local communities, in our network, uh, can lead the way in a number, number of different areas. Uh, and I even imagined that in the future, uh, it may be in people in the West uh, who will be learning from our currently marginalized communities about how to successfully adapt to climate change uh, without further destroying our local environments and polluting them uh, through the very highly complex, high energy hardened solutions uh, that essentially attempt to fight nature rather than adapt to it. Um, and where people have learned how to live within the boundaries uh, and these imposed limitations of mother nature. What I wanted to do is put in uh, the chat, a short film called the Iroquois speak out from Mother Earth, which relates uh, to our approach. I also wanted to get into a few details about the global cooperation overarching plan. Um, 
to be co-created with the members of the Global Unity Network Leaders Group, uh, in cooperation with the local members uh, that are related to this reverse collaborative tree planting project or program uh, announced at, uh, today, um, which is essentially a twinning of communities program uh, with the original CTP program uh, created with the goal of doubling Canada's commitment to planting forests um, as a private sector initiative. With the trees planted on private property in communities across Canada and other countries, uh, primarily the LDCs, uh, now called the Reverse CTP Program, the main uh, theme of the the new system being from Africa to the world, uh, for planting what are called 3D polyculture food forests in around local communities across Africa, in partnership with other communities around the world. Uh, so the the CTP Program originally developed by Drawdown Markham uh, for a group in Prince Edward County um, in East Central Ontario is actually what we call a regenerative climate smart community infrastructure development program, uh, which has, of course, a tree planting component, uh, but the tree planting in the community forests that result from such planting uh, are not actually central to the program outcomes, which are related to the establishment of and delivery of local regenerative community infrastructure used to deliver solutions for achieving the global goals, the SDGs at the local community level. So regenerative climate smart community humanitarian entrepreneurship learning programs, this education and training, um, the delivery systems uh, that we're implementing uh, at the local level in each community uh, that takes part in the CTP program or the reverse CTP program uh, can be done either as twinning or thrinning or quadrinning or quintinning of local community INBCs. So the plans, uh, these were originally presented to uh, my member of parliament, Ajit Ho Gukjohari, here in Richmond Hill. Uh, he was the first federal candidate of Iranian heritage uh, to be elected in Canada's parliament. Uh, he signed what's called the Pact for a Canadian Green New Deal pledge. Uh, back then, uh, even then, uh, we had subsequently met and discussed with him uh, this proposed project uh, back in February 2020, even about a month before this global COVID-19 pandemic um, and the lockdown, lockdowns that changed everyone's lives. Uh, but that placed the CTP program effectively on ice, um, at least until now, uh, where we're now restarting our conversations around this program uh, during this first week of 2022. Uh, so my hope is that this new reverse CTP program can also become Africa's contribution to the Global Pledge, pledge to End Deforestation by 2030, uh, which was actually the first headline agreement from COP26, uh, and where the EU has also proposed a law that would prevent importing all commodities linked to deforestation activities, uh, which means that there will likely be a significant push around the world to not only end deforestation, uh, but to, to replant forests where they had previously been destroyed or degraded. So I wanted to mention as well uh, Canadian contributions. Uh, so we're also in discussion right now with a number of important teams about our CTP program uh, here in Canada, including with the city of Mississauga, um, side discussions also with the city of Markham where I'm living, um, along with members of businesses who may wish to reestablish uh, some, some kind of new Canadian biochar initiative, uh, likely to be renamed as the Canadian Renewable Carbon Network uh, that may implement a Canadian carbon farming initiative as well uh, as part of our contribution to the implementation of the CTP program. Uh, so internationally, we're also talking to teams in South Asia, including a university in Pakistan and our networks in India uh, along with the continental president, of course, of Unity Network, uh, African Diaspora in Sierra Leone. Uh, since, of course, Unity Network Sierra Leone is further ahead and uh, they have already planted 10 trees of peace and reconciliation in their local communities across the country. So the CTP program does aim to create community and community to community partnerships between these local INBCs in each local community where the multi-stakeholder seven-sector heptamatrix partnership have already been established locally. 
So the ideal partners of these uh, INAP collaboratives should be identified early in the process. Uh, and though many are obvious, um, because there's usually only one local government um, and a lot of times only one local learning institution like a university or college, uh, can get more complicated as partners are identified from the NGOs and the CSOs and other types of local and regional organizations. So these discussions we're having now are the first steps required to establish this re reverse CTP program across all of the UnityNet Africa and diaspora country chapters uh, in 2022 and beyond, uh, with the planning for Turtle Island going out uh, now uh, until the year 2064 in six year implements increments uh, in alignment with the World Forestry Congress events that happened every six years. So 2064, of course, is one year after the African Union, African Union Agenda 2063 is expected to be achieved. So the next steps uh, of our discussions uh, that are ha happening now uh, with leaders of the Internet Nigeria are related to our Global Climate Smart Youth Forum uh, Nigeria, uh, which I'm hopeful we can partner with the Global Women's Development Network and other Unity Net chapters across Africa, as well as South Asia, in order to organize the event uh, for next October 4th to 16th, 2022, uh, which could be the launching point for the project proposal to create food forests in local communities all across Africa uh, as part of the UN Decade of Ecosystem Restoration uh, starting in Nigeria. So back in late October, uh, there was a proposal to establish Climate Smart Victory Fruit Orchard Enterprise Learning Program for Youth in FFAG in Nigeria. Uh, I believe is also eventually uh, can be replicated across all of Africa uh, and in other countries around the world. Uh, so the Climate Smart Victory Fruit Orchard ELP for Youth in FFAG also tied to this 42 year Lake Ontario Great Lakes NOAA Spark Initiative project plan uh, for the greater Toronto area. Uh, Canada, North America, uh, Turtle Island, uh, which can start easily in the first year. Uh, so this year uh, in Nigeria uh, with this YAMS and climate security project um, that another member in Nigeria is already initiated in their own local community. Uh, hopefully we'll have uh, a presentation as I, I said before about this during one of our future IGU summit events uh, this year. Uh, so we can learn more about some of the progress that they are making in Nigeria. So I want to mention as well, uh, or I'm putting into the chat, sorry, some additional information about the organizations that are involved in the CPP program. So the importantly, I wanted to mention, and I will just read this Slide. Our plan now is to leverage what's called Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, uh, such that we can develop uh, this CCFI, the, the uh, Canadian Carbon Farming Initiative, through the CRCN, the uh, Canadian Renewable Carbon Network, where the CTP program would be used to help leverage funding for international regenerative development projects. Uh, so where the Canada basically uh, and Canadian companies uh, would get the carbon credits, but where the developing countries, those developing economies, would get the regenerative infrastructure, including, of course, the forests, the gardens, the farms, the kitchens, and any regenerative development infrastructure solutions that would help communities to become more resilient, to adapt to climate change, and to implement these global goals, uh, starting, of course, with the sustainable development goals. So this is what I am currently doing right now as I discuss the establishment of a Canadian Rural World Carbon Network uh, through a planning process that will include discussions related to this Canadian, uh, to the Canadian contributions uh, to the upcoming Climate Smart Youth Forum event that is being planned for October of this year. So again, in the chat, I am putting a little bit of information about uh, the climate goals. That are, that are being set globally and which we are aligning ourselves with. But in the meantime, uh, the Global Unity Network continues to support the Climate Smart Food Program uh, and support the establishment of 
global network of eco villages uh, populated by our humanitarian entrepreneurs who are delivering these local solutions for achieving the global goals, the SDGs. Um, but of course, what I learned from about eco villages uh, from having conversations with those who tried it in the past, um, from the sort of back to the land movements, going back even to the late 60s and 70s, include, uh, including the international or intentional community movements here in Canada, uh, was that uh, one of the biggest challenges is actually social uh, or the social cohesion part of the, uh, with part of that reason being uh, the approach we're taking um, and the reason we take this approach uh, with the planting of the trees of peace and reconciliation uh, is as an activity that creates culturally significant spaces in our local uh, and even in our virtual communities uh, where discussions around solutions are intended to be taken um, where the humanitarian entrepreneurship approach we're taking uh, should ultimately be more sustainable uh, in hopefully all aspects. So once again, I, I will put in more information into the chat. I was to also mention uh, the programs that we're putting together, in particular the Abraham Project. Uh, um, Carlos Sanko from the Continental uh, Unity Net Africa Diaspora uh, mentioned to me once in a comment um, just last year that our trees, our tree planting projects uh, are going to target two billion trees. Uh, and I, I thought, well, okay, um, we can actually do better than this. Uh, the two billion tree benchmark that Carlos mentioned uh, was just a number that was pulled from the air by our prime minister uh, many years ago as part of his election promise that he made uh, during his 2015 campaign before he got elected. Um, but one of our members, Jane uh, from Kenya, mentioned uh, in this statement, that the world needs reforestation, uh, which was also followed by a project or, or a comment by, by uh, uh, one of our members, Fatima in Sierra Leone, who said that uh, God will surely help us to reforest our world and prevent the damage. Uh, I suggested therefore uh, to the members of our UNIMET African diaspora team that perhaps uh, one of the main purposes that I would suggest we may be doing uh, is related uh, to bringing uh, the 2.4 billion Christians and all of the 2.4 billion Muslims together around the world to develop and implement a common project to reforest planet Earth so that all of the pe people living in all of our communities around the world are living in and are surrounded by forest gardens such that the new future that we are uh, creating for our children and what they inherit will be a forest garden world. Uh, so I noted uh, that we might consider this project as something like creating a garden world, starting in Africa, essentially by establishing Garden Africa. So this could be done, of course, by reimagining the Garden of Eden in all of our local communities. Uh, so this entire process would start with the planting of the trees of peace re and reconciliation and those ceremonies that are used to create uh, ways uh, to create the sacred spaces in all of our local communities as places where people can come together simply as human beings putting aside all of their differences in order to discuss solutions so i suggested that we might call this process uh, of solutions imagineering And it is related uh, to what we would say is um, looking at the gardens of Eden, uh, which really means, as I came across info in Wikipedia, um, a common denominator between all the Abrahamic religions, where Garden of Eden or Garden of God also called terrestrial paradise, is actually the biblical paradise described in Genesis. Um, so the story of Eden actually echoes the Mesopotamian myth of a king as a primordial man placed, who was placed in a divine garden to guard the tree of life, which I would interpret as all of God's creation, 
and all living things. Uh, where the Hebrew Bible also depicts Adam and Eve as walking around that Garden of Eden, naked due to their sinlessness, out of the ground made the Lord know and grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A quote from the Bible. So the Talmud and the Jewish Kabbalah also mentioned the Garden of Eden, and it's also a terrestrial uh, abundant fertility and luxuriant vegetation known as the Lower Gan Eden. So Adam in this story is said to have dwelt only in the Gan, whereas Eden is said never to be witnessed by any mortal eye. So in modern Jewish astrology, it's also believed that history will compete complete itself and the ultimate destination of humanity will be when all mankind returns to the Garden of Eden. So uh, these faiths, the Jewish, the Christian, the Muslim, also align in and around the Garden of Eden. Uh, so by the time the Prophet Muhammad uh, came up, came to the forefront, uh, gardens of paradise and gardens of perpetual residence were promised to the righteous uh, in Islam. And the pre-Islamic Arabs considered the slightest indication of nature's greenness to be sacred. So in Islam, uh, the word jana means paradise or garden and is the final abode of the righteous. So gardens of Eden, where Adam and Hawa dwelt, are also called Jana. And Firdaus in Arab is also the literal term meaning paradise, which was borrowed from the Persian word Pardis, which is also the word and source of the English word paradise. But the Quran actually uses the term Jana symbolically referring to paradise. Firdaus designating the highest level of heaven. So according to even Muslim belief, Everything one longs for in this world will be there in paradise. In other words, in the gardens of paradise. So we are trying to bring together all of the Abrahamic community to implement these projects that can also be called the, the gardens world where we can as well leverage these to create something with an idea a vision called the perma trail uh, so i wrote recently to a gentleman by the name of daniel twent uh, another one of the members of our global Unity network that we should and could leverage the experts who are members of our two global unity network groups uh, specifically the unity eco village network and the Unity Biodiversity Network in order to assist him and his teams to achieve his dream to establish a global permaculture trail or perma trail around the world. So I will put in the chat some information about this. But as we consider how we might begin to reforest planet Earth in ways that are truly meaningful to the people in each of our local communities. And as we think about ways of establishing Daniel's imagined permatrail project, I'd like to suggest that we might do our garden world reforestation in both Canada as a project that would be connected to the rest of Turtle Island or North America and in Africa. So this would be especially important as we move forward with our collective plans and partnerships to help reforest planet Earth and as our local community members considered how to create Garden Africa, as mentioned previously, where the people of Africa, with the help of the entire African diaspora and their supporters, can also take a leadership role in the creation of this garden world, which, as noted before, could be thought of as the reimagining of the Garden of Eden. I also suggested that we start this process with the establishment of national and continental networks of sacred spaces in all of our communities. So these sacred spaces created through the planting of the trees of peace and reconciliation can also be created in the digital realm 
especially within the virtual gathering spaces in the metaverse, uh, using things like NFTs, where we come together and develop our collective plans to build out the real world physical regenerative infrastructure that will need to reforest planet Earth and create a garden world for our children. Of course, this can all start with the establishment of the local open source regenerative community infrastructure set up as the CSV gardens and the 3D polyculture victory food forests, with the infrastructure being first established at all of our local schools, set up as unity garden classrooms, with a curriculum that is intended to be delivered in these unity gardens, would also be designed to help teach our youth and to all of the community members who are part of these local INAB collaboratives, not just the practical skills that they need, but also the leadership, self-awareness, and trusting, peaceful, empathetic, collaborative, committed, and professional values and ethics that they'll need in order to help create trust and that they'll need in order to help create a healthy regenerative economy that leaves no one behind. I also noted that some of these Unity Garden classrooms, possibly also uh, most of them eventually, will likely need to be built within controlled environment habitats. Uh, where people, animals, and all of our relations, including all of the kingdoms of life, can reside in harmony and mutual benefit. But I mentioned trust. Uh, trust among members of the team reflects mutual confidence in each other's experience and expertise. We are therefore encouraging interdependence and also and but also, that also comes from being willing to forgive mistakes that have been made and take responsibility when we take make errors. Thus, one of the most important lessons that will be taught and reinforced through examples in the Unity Gardens will be that we are all human, we are all equal, and that humans make mistakes and we must be forgiven. Thus, along with for supporting all of the practical skills that, are, that uh, can be found in the standard school curriculum, in most countries and jurisdictions. The Unity Garden's holistic curriculum will also focus on creating a culture of collaboration using the values, principles, beliefs, and ethics underlying collaboration, such as open-minded culture, learning and, learning and reinforcement from a young age that helps young people to build trust between them as team members of planet Earth and will ensure that everyone feels comfortable communicating even if they do do something that others might consider to be wrong. Again, I wanted to mention the Abraham Project. So the collaborative events that we'd like to do in 2022, starting this year, are related to the activities of the Global Unity 4K Clubs Network, the Unity Gardens Network, as well as the Unity Eco Village Network, uh, the Unity Biodiversity Network, as well, um, where the first globally coordinated Abraham Project Tree of Peace and Reconciliation Showcase Project uh, for Global Cooperation uh, will be delivered locally in multiple local communities by the members of the Global Unity Network on World, in, sorry, World Environment Day, Sunday, June 5th, 2022. So in about five months from now, and which will allow us to begin establishing a global network of these uh, interfaith neighborhood and academic and business collaboratives uh, that will lead the way to lo at the local level everywhere in the world to undertaking the various globally coordinated events that we hope can go on during the rest of the year. So this important uh, launch event would be followed by a globally coordinated bubble, community bubble fund festival. Uh, that will be designed to allow youth and families to have fun while they learn about the miraculous properties of bubbles uh, and how to use the bubbles uh, and potentially allow humanity to more easily adapt, perhaps even to thrive in a warming and changing global climate, uh, especially in those areas of the world where the impacts of global warming and climate change will be felt by the most severely, uh, including here in Canada, uh, especially in the north. Uh, in Indian mountainous areas, as well as in places like Sub-Saharan Africa and South and Southeast Asia. And some possible dates for the globally uh, 
globally coordinated bubble fund festivals uh, would be uh, sometime between August 9th, uh, the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples, uh, also uh, known as the International Day of Solidarity with the Struggle of Women in South Africa and Namibia, or mm -hmm. National Women's Day, uh, August 12th, International Youth Day, and August 19th, World Humanitarian Day, uh, potentially opening up uh, to have a local bubble fund festival on any date uh, between August 9th and August 19th, which is an 11 day window. Mm -hmm. Something. Sorry, but my phone is just ringing here on my desk. <laughs> Um, so uh, other events uh, that we'd like to do this year, uh, Global Cooperation Day, October 4th, uh, through to World Food Day, October 16th. Uh, so we have the Ubuntu Summit virtual event for October 4th, which we did uh, last year. Um, this is also the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi, uh, and also known as Blessing of the Animals Day which are both celebrated by the Catholic faith communities um, as well. We have a Climate Smart Youth Forum event, uh, which uh, globally coordinated uh, would like to design to allow youth and families from around the world uh, to learn about and discuss these regenerative climate smart agriculture and food growing solutions. Uh, that support achieving uh, SDGs 2, Zero Hunger, uh, and local circular regenerative economies, along with learning more about the Climate Smart Food Program and all the various components of the ad hoc International Advisory Board process of globalization of the global goals and the smart virtual infrastructure at the Unity Gardens, uh, the Interchange for Peace, uh, that BCN that allows local community uh, interfaith neighborhood and business uh, academic and business collaborators to gain access to all of the learning programs, uh, the information, the education, the training, uh, the support programs, including the financial support systems uh, that we are promoting through the Global Unity Network uh, that will in turn allow uh, local community members and families to implement the local regenerative climate smart humanitarian infrastructure and enterprise solutions uh, in the context of their own neighborhoods uh, and communities everywhere. Uh, so uh, the primary host uh, this year uh, for the Climate Smart Youth Forum Week 2022 uh, is uh, Yali International in Nigeria, uh, working in partnership with Unity Net Nigeria. Uh, Yali International divided into two arms, uh, Youth Education and Leadership Initiative, um, managed by Dr. Amadou Monday Amadou uh, from Unity Net Nigeria. So the Global Unity Network, um, the coordinated community tree planting uh, proposal that is being made as well. Um, we are looking to design and establish 3D poly polyculture food forests uh, in local communities around the world as a first step uh, to creating this garden world uh, done in all of our local communities. Uh, we're a local uh, Global Unity Network, INBC, NABC has been established uh, and where members of these communities uh, established Victory Forest Unity Gardens uh, that are designed for delivering the various Global Unity 4K Club humanitarian entrepreneurship programs for educating and training these women, youth, and other community leaders uh, about the various ways of achieving food and nutrition security, zero hunger goals, and the global uh, goals. Uh, so such as climate action uh, goals, SDG 13, the biodiversity goals, SDG 15, uh, the gender equality goals, the clean water goals, the clean energy goals, uh, the peace goals, the no poverty goals, uh, through the local community enterprises that also aim, aim to leave no one behind. Uh, so the last global uh, globally coordinated community tree planting event um, could potentially be done during this uh, Climate Smart Youth Forum Week, 
uh, which likely also includes an in-person conference and event in, in Nigeria as well. So we also have been offered, uh, I wanted to mention, um, to organize a side event during the 2022 uh, year. Um, there's a, an event called Ensemble National Conference on the SDGs in Canada that takes place on March 4th. Uh, so we have received an invitation uh, from the manager of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Canada, uh, which is housed at the University of Waterloo here in Ontario. I, I will be suggesting that this side event can be done as a joint effort uh, between UniNet Canada uh, with the participation and leadership of Tukitana EV Canada, um, UniNet Europe uh, with Tukitana EV Germany, uh, UniNet Africa and Diaspora with the support of uh, Tukitana EV Zambia, Uganda, Kenya, and others, and possibly also UniNet South and Central Asia and UniNet Southeast Asia, uh, continental chapters as well taking part. Um, we are hoping that, uh, of course, of course, those new chapters will be modeled on the African success story uh, for the establishment of continental networks. I wanted to mention as well um, about listening uh, being important to be active, uh, listening through your eyes, as it's said, um, where the old days of blasting out features and benefits of presentations is long lost or long past. Um, now it's important that we start asking questions uh, and continually learn from each other uh, through questioning, uh, asking the questions and hopping over the fence, as we call it, um, so that uh, we are uh, talking to or with each other and among each other, uh, not as adversaries, but embracing each other um, and seeking problems together or solutions to problems together uh, by asking questions uh, listening to each other and uncovering um, the needs through engaged listening and listening well, uh, because uh, it is our belief that everyone uh, we meet has something to teach. Uh, we must be open to their message, uh, listening, learning, and growing, commun communicating in ways uh, to become engaged leaders and engaging leaders, uh, which means. Um, we must engage with others, uh, not just uh, for the charisma we each have, uh, but for the cre connections we create. Uh, this means uh, learning, uh, listening, bonding, um, and growing in wisdom and compassion uh, to genuinely increase the goodness of life. As one gentleman said, uh, we need to choose to hear with open ears, choose to see with open eyes, choose to grow with open minds. We must listen well and listen to build a life and world in which we all can live well. We must listen to make a difference in, tho in those around us and in the world that surrounds us. Uh, we must make today better than yesterday and tomorrow even better than today and choose to make this and every day a truly great and growthful day. Choose to live with intention and meaning and with goodness choose to make a difference in this life and even the life we have, uh, which today can be better than yesterday and tomorrow better than today. Choose to make this a truly great day filled with kindness and understanding. By celebrating the goodness, by nurturing it, by building upon it and going to offer kindness where there's too little of it and giving understanding to those who desperately seek it because your kindness will be remembered more as an attribute and a virtue of who you are more than any other value. You just need to ask yourself, who do we have around us already today that needs us to spread a little kindness their way? Let's go out today and make a difference in the life of another in the world that surrounds us. Let's go there out and share a little kindness with others. I just described the Global Unity Network as a self-defined community where mutual responsibilities are also recognized along with our rights. So we are do engagement within the Global Unity Network, which involves a process of regenerative engagement of self with others. Um, I'd 
like to reference an article about Tocqueville's doctrine of self-interest properly understood, described within this article uh, called An Angel and a Brute, where self-interest in individualism in Tocqueville's America uh, by Tom Murphy, where he notes that the single skill most necessary for the preservation of equality and freedom is the ability to recognize and respect the rights of self and others, where others also includes Mother Earth and all living things. One can only learn this by seeing the vital connection between his or her private interest and that of the other. In the international arena, nations and groups of peoples cannot connect the idea of rights to their private interest because their own rights have been so widely neglected. Faced with such disregard, they find no acceptable alternative to the use of force. However, the world's long struggle toward community will proceed. And it, however, it has barely begun to go through schooling. Uh, but if the virtue of self-interest properly understood remains a vital part of our national curriculum, if it is regularly taught through the innumerable combinations of citizens seeking it in all the corners of their lives, then the country and the world can remain secure. Within the administrative decentralization of American government, such a system announced that nothing will be done, no roads fixed, no laws enforced, no schools run, no fires fought, no fences mended, or no taxes collected, without the direct participation of individuals, especially on the local level. So for this reason, individuals grow in awareness that one man's self-interest should not and need not exclude the self-interest of another. So as soon as the common affairs are treated as common, each man notices that he is not as independent of his fellows as he used to suppose and that to get their help, he must often offer his aid to others. Thus, while one side of the equality equation, competition through the natural compulsion to establish status and identity uh, is important, another side teaches that cooperation is the only means of achieving any level of prosperity. Noting that the democracy, in a democracy, there's strength only in numbers. So, uh, Lloyd, please note, yes. you're now mm -hmm. 90 minutes into your presentation. Your guest yeah. is here for the second presentation for your information. Okay, um, so I guess we, what, what I can do is, is um, this this does this did end up being quite a bit longer than I expected because I had put in all of the extra the slides I cut out from the last session. Um, so what we can do uh, is we can go to that other uh, session, and if we do want to continue la later, we can continue this. Uh, I well, will there, be there are questions about account. your presentation. They wanted to mm -hmm. have a question and answer period before we go to the next presentation, but I'll leave that up to you. Yeah, okay, well, let's let's do that. Um, I, I will be needing to modify this presentation, of course, and, show, and remove some, some uh, slides, I think, because uh, I just put everything back in. Um, so uh, let's let's move on to our guest speaker today. And we'll first we'll first perhaps answer some mess, some of the questions that are being asked. Uh, I'm not I'm not uh, Again, reading the chat here. Yeah, hello, thank you. This is Jesus, may I ask a question? Raramuri? Yes, yes, go ahead. Thank you, I just wanna also honor all of our ancestors that are participating and all the answers of the lands that we are on. And my question is, with the, all this great work that you're doing, what has been your level of success of making headway at, the regional levels on each continent and then at the larger level at the UN? So we, we are a grassroots movement. So we're not, we're, we are actually not engaging at the UN level directly. Um, we, are, we are engaging, however, uh, at uh, the, uh, through the, um, glo the global 
what's the name again? Uh, the UN Global Compact uh, chapters. So this this is actually uh, our, our portal of engagement, as you can say, um, where we are we are actually through the process that actually that uh, Andrew Williams Jr. has developed uh, at the Five Points Views Foundation originally. Um, the uh, the engagement is through the global. This uh, I'm forgetting the name. Sorry, the uh, UN Global Compact um, local networks. Uh, so we are uh, through that. Uh, we are encouraging all of our members, especially the the uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, join the UN Global Compact Network uh, at their their local networks. Um, so our engagement with the UN is not with the UN itself. Uh, it is with the UN Global Compact. So we engage with, with especially with the, the, the members of the UN Global Compact, including the corporations, including all of the NGOs and all of the organizations that are members. And to become a member of the UN Global Compact for a, a civil society organization or for a, a, an NGO is free. Uh, so this is our way of engaging with the UN. Uh, not directly with, with, for instance, the, the uh, let's say, the Secretary General or, or any of their, their programs at the UN level. Uh, instead, we work together in part using the partnership framework of the UN Global Compact uh, Network. Uh, actually, Andrew, I'm Andrew I'm is on the as well. You could probably ex explain it better. And do you have a well, similar yes. mechanism to interact with the African Union? Or is that not available? Oh, well, first, let me first thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Andrew Williams, Jr. And you may have heard you, Andrew. Andrew Networks is kind of providing the platform for this. But this actually began as a project of the Five Points Youth Foundation here in Los Angeles, where we're actually broadcasting from the Tongva people. But today also is a relatively important day in the history of the United States because they are also the one year celebration, if you call it that, of our insurrection here at our capital. So we here in the United States have a vested interest in making sure that we are all able to work together collaboratively, regardless of our um, country borders, so to speak. But yes. in particular, uh, the background, just for your information, I'm gonna sh briefly share my screen, just a moment, please. <laughs> What I put on the screen there, and I'll put a link into the chat, are the 10 principles of the United Nations Global Compact. The Five Points Youth Foundation has been a member of that organization since 2014, when I became president of Five Points. But I've been involved with this since its actual founding back in 1999. Kofi Annan made an announcement at the 1999 Davos World Economic Forum about an out call to corporate rep corporations to have corporate social responsibility commitments, to have impact, to, uh, to, to be cautious of their impacts adverse on local communities. So out of that first idea, <clears throat> those 40 corporations made commitments to address human rights, the environment, and labor. Later, they added anti-corruption and transparency. But as you know, Kofi Annan was also the Secretary General that launched the United Nations Global Compact. The idea was, I'm sorry, the United, the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. So what we now are dealing with as the Sustainable Development Goals are in fact uh, the ne next iteration. There is a direct link uh, between the African Union's Agenda 2063 and what we now know as the Sustainable Development Goals. It was <clears throat> in 2012 when the African Union uh, under Madame Zuma started devising this post-Millennium Development Goal Common African Position that was the first regional uh, introduction of what has now become the Sustainable Development Goals. That was actually passed in January of uh, 2015, while the Sustainable Development Goals were officially launched in that September. So <clears throat> what we're attempting to do is to align the efforts of ourselves on a local basis along with 
the work going on internationally. So specifically, there is an overlink, overlay between the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and the 20 objectives of the African Union Agenda 2063. However, as you may know, we now have, we're in the midst of a, of a, of a global pandemic, but we are faced with, I believe, a coming hunger pandemic, but we're now seeing the adverse effects of the climate chaos that was addressed with the Paris 2015 Climate Agreement. So what our intent is, is to align our efforts with those of the United Nations Global Compact. They have a specific 2021 through 2023 vision of expanding what they call their local networks. For example, here in the United States, as you may know, we have been, our country has not been very active in supporting United Nations uh, global, uh, United Nations projects. In fact, the, we had several administrations that went so far as to pull us out of a worldwide collaboration such as the Paris Climate Accord. Now we're back, but it is in fact, unfortunately, the United States, where on all of our 50 states, none of them are even halfway to achieving the sustainable development goals. And the ones left furthest behind are the indigenous, African-American and Latino populations. <laughs> so the work that we're doing, sir, is actually to provide a platform where those like yourself and others can come and collaborate. But the idea is that we all do, in fact, make a concerted effort to increase the number of civil society members in the United Nations Global Compact so that we can balance and hold accountable, not just the corporations, but also the governments so that we can, in effect, provide a voice to the voiceless. So in a nutshell, right now, there are about 13,000 uh, major corporations. They've committed trillions of dollars to uh, ad addressing climate change, uh, post-pandemic uh, solutions. What we're saying is that if we can add another 10,000 civil society members, then we can be in a position to balance and hold accountable those people at a global le level, as well as regional, national, and local. Thank you. Thank you, that was wonderful. Appreciate that insight. And so perhaps this, this now is, would, would be the time for you to take the opportunity to introduce yourself. We're gonna ask each of our guests who've not been here before to do so. We have many people here in this dozen or so, uh, two dozen people. Most of us have been here on a regular ongoing basis, but thanks for joining us and take time to introduce yourself and feel free to include your contact information in the chat so we can follow up with you. But the floor is yours, sir, please. And welcome, introduce yourselves. Well, thank you, that was very kind and generous of you. So I'm, I'd like to introduce myself as a Raramuri, indigenous person located in the Sierra Madres of Mexico, what's known as Mexico. And I'm interested in advocating for global indigenous climate justice and coordinating at a transcontinental level. Since this is a new career transition for me, I'm right now learning about what's going on and where I can bring my skills, my passion to the effort. Thank you, Andrew. Well, it's very timely that you mentioned that. As I said, I'm here in Los Angeles. Lloyd may have mentioned that he is in fact representative, representing uh, the Commonwealth of Nations, Francophony countries, as well as what we call Turtle Island. But we do, in fact, have a need for someone such as yourself, if you so choose, to join our efforts. It's completely voluntary. But what we will commit to do is provide access to any resources that we have to support your own efforts and activities. I do want to let you know also that we are broadcasting this now on Facebook. But one of our sponsors is uh, the Universal Citizens Media Network. So now we are launching uh, the Ayakba TV Network. So you will have a chance if you so choose to not just make your own presentation, but we like to think of this as a docu-reality series where each of us has an opportunity to advance our own objectives and then attract a worldwide audience. It's unlike a Facebook or YouTube, where it's a private network. So you can make sure that the next thing that comes up is not graphic sex or violence, but it is aligned to faith-based or educational content. So I do look forward to working with you and finding ways we can support your efforts. I do appreciate your being here. Thank you so very much. That's wonderful, Andrew. And I, and I will take you up on that offer. 
as soon as I figure out the slot where I'm going to focus my efforts, but I'll keep you in mind. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank thank you so much. It's, I'd like to thank you as well um, for coming on this call because we actually do have an indigenous global unity network uh, that is that it was was established some time ago but it, it is looking for leader uh, probably possibly like yourself um, to take it forward so we can really truly engage with indigenous communities uh, not just here on Turtle Island but around the world uh, I believe uh, I mentioned that there were there's around 3,000 indigenous communities in Africa and at least as many. Uh, I think uh, estimates somewhere between three to 5,000 indigenous communities uh, in Asia as well, including Asia Pacific, Oceania, uh, and all of the islands. So if we can bring all of those uh, indigenous communities together uh, in a global network, uh, I think it could be it could be larger than the UN potentially. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you, I like that idea. <laughs> so if you have a few other new guests and then perhaps you can move to your presentation. So uh, yeah, so um, usually at this time, uh, as we go forward, I recognize our guests, uh, starting usually with the women. Um, uh, so I did uh, want to ask again, everybody to put their contact information into the chat window uh, so that others on the call will have your contact, uh, especially if you are new uh, to these IGU Summit events. Um, I'm taking a look at the, uh, faces on our screen uh, that I recognize. So I'm looking actually, um, I do see Stephanie has popped her face up on the screen uh, at the top row of my screen anyway. Um, I can ask her to introduce herself usually because she is a close colleague of mine as well uh, here in Canada. I think she is still in Hawaii if I'm correct. Absolutely, Lloyd. Thank you so much. And thank you, Andrew. And thank you, everybody, for being on this call. Um, now we're a year into it, I believe, uh, we've been meeting. My name is Stephanie Schuler. I'm no, usually in Toronto, Canada, but right now I'm in Maui, Hawaii, based with my Maui Aloha Project Eco Village Initiative. Uh, I'm a social entrepreneur and I'm a doctoral student at the University of Toronto, OISE, the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. I'm focused on holistic education and social emotional well being. I've had a lifetime of working with children, youth, women, and intergenerational communities in spaces inside and outside of the classroom, like youth groups, camps, and community centers, abled and differently abled community members, which led me to being a learning and community design consultant in Toronto, Canada. And my degree in play led to co-creation of the Maui Aloha Project the Eco Village Initiative, which is an inclusive and intergenerational communities that value holistic well-being of each other and the planet and all of its inhabitants. Um, we, are, we are aimed to, to transforming through thriving growth-based design rather than the current deficit model that tends to label, it's especially starting it with children, school-age children, such as learning disabilities or behavioral disabilities and the like. We celebrate multiliteracies and we honor all of our identities, all of our indigenous and cultural wisdoms as stewards of the earth, prioritizing sustainable and regenerative food, housing, and social solutions. I'm also a co-founder and co-chair of the Global Unity Network with, and, and with Lloyd Helferty and co-founder and director of the Unity Learning Network for the purposes of addressing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through communication and practical food systems learning. Thank you for allowing me the space to introduce myself. Thank you, Stephanie, very much. So Stephanie is our go-to girl for, for everything to do with the learning programs, which is really what we are uh, very much all about. Um, so we, we, I, think of, I think of the Unity Learning Network as one of the sort of top level, high level um, coordinating 
uh, networks that we have as uh, part of our network of networks. Um, so I'm looking now at the screen and I'm seeing a new face of Romy Birchler, hoping that she may be able to uh, unmute herself and introduce herself if possible. If not, we can go to we can go to somebody that we've heard from before. It's like uh, like Susan Yego. Yego. Hi and good evening. Oh, Hi. now we have we have two people on. Well, let's start with Hi. Romy. Hi. Okay. Yeah, we have um, I think I have to unmute. I have to unmute myself and uh, because I am on two accesses, so I have to. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm currently on a program on a master class of, of sustained living, and I'm living in Switzerland and I'm very much active in all this field, and I have been traveling Africa and living in some parts in Nigeria, in South Africa and so, and I very much feel the, the urge or the, the joy also to find some whatever activities inside um, intuitive, sensitive people, inside schooling, inside I'm mostly on coordinating on uh, online events and doing a lot of, I'm doing a lot of different arts. And so I'm just reaching out to find uh, where it fits in. And I think my favorite places I really look for are somehow in the places in South Africa, in East Coast or so, yeah. And I'm just along with, and I'm just bringing together even with my own uh, sites and with my own platforms, with my own places, that something starts to move because I see that there is so much going on. And I think one of the needs right now is that just they are not more, we don't need more organizations, but we need the organizations to come together and to really to use the power on on fewer places because there are so many places reaching out and I think sometimes to start something it needs a lot of energy and if we can avoid just to grow some other new places and just bring together what already is I think we can do something great together that's what I think right now mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Lloyd. Let me just briefly reply. Make sure you do include your contact information in the chat. But yes, we do agree with you. We have, for example, we have many organizations that are already working on many of what they call the sustainable development goals, but they themselves may not even be aware of it. So what we're believing is that if we're able to provide a platform where the existing organizations cannot just come together but self-manage themselves and identify, for example, which of the 17 sustainable development goals they're working in, one or more, that will begin the process of us being able to quantify the work that we're doing locally and then attract support from others locally and globally. But yes, we welcome you here. And yeah, we do and Andrew, just, just sorry, we are already connected on Facebook, your Facebook friend of mine. And by the way, I also think it's important in this time that um, by connecting and by, I think to shape the awareness on places, because even in Switzerland, I always think they are, I mean, they, it's it's I think the sh to shape the awareness of I mean on my place I tried to be uh, with uh, the coordinator for humanities team Switzerland, but I just think there's still a lot to do on on awareness because there are a lot of people out there. They are living in some other cloud and just to reach them, I don't think not even to bring them in, but just to reach them that they know that something like this exists. Because I think we are very much in a time where everybody lives in a cloud and it's more, it's more, um, 
it's easier sometimes to talk to people they are living in the same cloud on the other side on earth than to go and to knock at the door to my neighbor's door and he tells me about his life and where he's living and what cloud and i said ah i didn't know that this already ex does this also exist so that's all and thanks yeah i will hear from you and i will connect was a nice talk and wishing you all the best for 2022 that something may emerge and that's for the best of everybody mm -hmm. well thank you and just to let you know uh this group here is also have representatives in multiple groups one of them is the global women's development network that you might find of interest in march of last year we did a five-day conference on <clears throat> women's development or a women's day event so in 2022, in March, we're planning now to expand our reach just from Zoom to a platform that exists called Hopin. That will allow people that speak different languages to also engage with our audience. So we are looking forward to making that available to you and to all as we move forward. But thank you so much for joining us. And, and also, yeah, you. and that's, yeah, that's great. And I think I also like to, when, whenever needed in French or German or whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's critically important. We do have one of our co-founders uh, speaks French, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. But we oh, certainly do need, we do need, uh, we do need the European languages. And German is very important, as you may know. Well, of course you do know, right? Uh, Germany is the economic engine of the European Union. But it's also critically important for us to connect the dots uh, around the world. So we do look forward to working and networking with you. And yes, we do need your assistance and support for sharing what you find of value in English, perhaps to an audience that is one that only speaks German or another language. So again, thank you very much. OK, thanks. Also, I did want to mention that uh, in my conversations with with uh, the, the organization mentioned earlier, Twikitane EV. Uh, they are based in Germany uh, and we are in discussions now with them to establish a, uh, a Unity Network Europe um, uh, continental chapter to start to bring this conversation as well to the people of Europe. Uh, so using these platforms that allow for the translation um, will be very useful, I think, in that context. Of course, in many contexts. Oh, Lloyd, is your is your next presenter here? I see someone here from the Democratic Republic of Congo, but I don't know if that's that's the person or not. Um, his name is Nicholas. I'm just looking at all the names here. Who is on the call? I don't see anybody by the name of Nicholas, unfortunately. Nicholas Bilika. Well, in that case, I do see a, a new name, Ambrose, I believe has been here before. There are a few other names that are un unfamiliar to me. So since we didn't have the time, perhaps we could allow them to introduce themselves. Yes, let's, let's have that. Ambrose, is it possible you can unmute yourself and introduce yourself? Also, see not, Marie S. That's not familiar to me. And uh, Anne Boussigny. Boussigny. It starts off with Oppo A12. And Nala Sullivan. I see a message that the host needs to unmute you, but everyone can unmute yourself. But I'll ask you to unmute yourself right now. If not, anybody else can put up their can uh, put up their hand. There's a if you go to the bottom of your Zoom uh, and you go to uh, Hello. yeah, Lloyd, reactions. Okay, I would like to kind of uh, reintroduce myself. Yeah. Okay, so please. Hello, hello. Can I speak? Can I say something? Yes, of course. Go right yes, ahead. The floor, the floor is to you, Susan. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I have been following the uh, presentation of uh, by Lo by Mr. Lord, Mr. Loy Helfetti, and I think there is one major thing as the year has begun that we have to uh, focus on because 
on this platform, we are speaking from different places, different countries, different continents. And if we are only going to have virtual meetings and virtual planning, as from the beginning of the year until we reach the end, I don't know how much we are going to accomplish. Um, my second thought is um, <clears throat> for the African Platform of Action or for the Unity Net African Diaspora, we are uh, some of these African or Kenya or yeah, some of these countries have not yet uh, registered the organization, but they are in the process of registering the organizations. And here we have projects coming like uh, the tree planting in, uh, in the month of June. And in some countries, we won't be allowed to do any activity if the organization is not registered or recognized. And therefore, there are some things that we need to do together. And um, when it comes to regist re uh, registering an organization with the AGM or Attorney General, there is some funds, there are some funds that are needed quite amount to do the registration. So I don't know whether you are going to get in touch with the presidents of the nations of Unity, Unity Net uh, nations, whether it's Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria, whichever African country, and find out uh, the problems they have in registering their organizations. Because tree planting, we can't go on without being recognized by our governments that we are doing a project. And that's one thing we have to take into mind. Into into yeah, we have to take that point. Uh, the other thing is um, we have schools. I have I have heard of participants here saying that they are opening schools of agriculture, uh, schools where youth are learning agriculture, like uh, Dr. Said Hussein, and I think another lady from Nigeria or yeah. And you know, like we, how can we be resourceful? How can our impact be felt in such places where they need resource persons to speak or to give a lecture or a presentation on a subject matter in agriculture. Uh, you know, like you can also vet and see amongst us, either in, in any of the Unity Net uh, groups and see who is able to participate and be able to assist in lecturing a class online from the distance. And because of COVID-19, most of these projects cannot be cannot take place because, because like now this uh, Unity Net Global its office is in Canada. And I'm sure Lord Helfetti, it's not possible for you now during this COVID-19 to be able to travel from one country to another to ensure that the projects that we are talking about are really implemented. And if there are any projects that are going to be funded, that they are really imp implemented, you don't only rely on pictures being taken or, or yeah, such kinds of presentations, but will there be a physical time where the group will be able to visit one continent or one country and ascertain that some things are taking place so that everything is not only virtual. Because when we only have virtual meetings, I don't know whether we can implement anything virtual. Hmm. That's my question. That's, those, are my, those are my things, the things that go around my mind about hmm. these organizations. And there's also one thing about 4K Club. Oh. Oh. 4K Club, what impact can we give to these children? In 4K Club, uh, they also need visitations. Uh, they, it's a lot. There's a lot to be done. But anyhow, these are some of the things that run my mind. And uh, uh, if I don't speak them out, or if I don't ask these questions, I don't know who can answer them. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will. We we will continue our conversations around, especially on the 4K Club uh, side of things. But in terms of uh, and this, this is, of course, the challenge right now. Of course, is uh, we 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 are actually in the entering or re-entering sort of a sort of a semi-lockdown phase here in Canada because of this new COVID variant, and uh, so our, our restaurants are closed again, and uh, we are, of course, in this challenging times. Uh, one more one more time. Uh, so we need to we need to leverage the best to the best of our our uh, ability the tools. Uh, of the virtual um, communication tools that we have at our disposal, so like like Zoom, like uh, like using the WhatsApp uh, and using all of the these uh, social media tools that we have uh, to do the best we can, uh, and it is and it is and it will continue to be challenging to uh, try to actually verify, for instance, um, what's what's happening in the, at the local level. 
Uh, we obviously don't have the budgets that we can send people, uh, fly people all over the world to go verify things that are actually, are actually happening. Um, videos help, uh, as opposed to just pictures sometimes. Uh, and uh, I trust uh, as well, for instance, that uh, the trees that were planted in Sierra Leone, as an example, are, are, are being taken care of and are not dying, as an example. Uh, I have actually had that experience from our tree of peace and reconciliation that was planted in downtown Toronto. Um, it, it was not taken care of uh, last year uh, and did not survive. So it's, it can be a challenge uh, when you don't have uh, ongoing communications, which is part of the reason why we're trying to develop um, this, this uh, interchange for peace. Uh, as a place where everybody can come together and uh, and sort of um, uh, creating the local interfaith neighborhood and business collaboratives allows uh, sort of people to that we trust to monitor each other uh, and what's actually happening in those communities. Uh, so, are there any other uh, any other comments or? or uh, uh, yes, Lloyd. If it yeah. is, yeah, no, if I may. No, no, no can I can I can I can I help to answer some of the concerns that came up from, from Susan? Yes. Around okay. Go ahead. I'll give the floor to Carlos. Uh, All right. Th thank you so much. Uh, uh, good day. Uh, my name is Carlos Richard Sankar. I'm the Continental uh, President for Unity Net Africa and Diaspora. Um, in relation to my 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 colleagues, my sister Susan, the concerns series about the sustainability aspect of the entire aspect of the unity net. And that is true. And so one of the questions that you mentioned that you don't know who you can you can ask or maybe we are to bring short questions or concerns you have in relation to the way forward uh, the process of the unity net in the way forward so i want to assure you that uh, remember we have a continental ball that is represented from so many of the current active uh, Unity Net chapters in Africa. So uh, you can ask. We have also forums that you can send in your questions, your comments around areas that, or your suggestions that you think we can concentrate and see what we can do together as a team to amplify our global work our global plan, our global focus we have, so that we all can have it right. This is because nobody, none of us have all the answers 100%, starting from the global team. So therefore, that is why we said from Lord's presentation, we said this is a community-based uh, intervention, so it means we need everybody on board to input ideas to see how we can move this particular aspect of what we want to see, what we want to realize. So uh, remember at the end of last year after the Continental Board set up, we are working as it just to ensure that we have what we call to fulfill the compliance system in place to ensure that we operate legally at continental level as Unity Net Africa and diaspora, and at the same time also operate legally in our various chapters in every country that we are now, we are operating actively. So therefore, we all understand and the policies related to uh, NGO operations or whatever 
organizational operation operations. We have them in mind. We will ensure that anything that we going to do as unit in it, it is it fulfills the standards, the compliance system of any country or any continent that will make makes it right because that is the law. And we are law abiding. We want to ensure that we fulfill that since uh, we are um, working to support the community and ensure that we boost the community development from our own approach. So therefore, currently, uh, as I'm telling you, yesterday, uh, I got a notification from Uganda, we are in, we have a continental uh, secretariat that the first stage of registration has gone through all what the name unity net africa and diaspora was approved and all what we are waiting for the first phase is the the certificate is coming very soon and from that level we are going to the la the the next stage which is uh the continental stage to ensure that we have its rights with the Bureau of Registration in Uganda to ensure that we fulfill the, the conditions needed. So uh, if I believe you were part of the meetings, the continental meetings we, we are having before. Uh, so this is the process that we are going through. So we want to ensure that we finish the continental uh, registration after then we support the system of uh, registration at various step, chapter level in every country that is active, that is functional in terms of uh, working with the uh, unity net. So that's exactly what we are doing now. And uh, you talk about conditions, issues around uh, funds, implementation or uh, project and all this one, you're right. So that is why I, I believe you are part of the project executive team at continental level in Africa. So we are building our necessary tools to ensure that uh, what we call the, the log frame that will be our, uh, our guide to lead us to where we are going where we are coming and where we are going. So uh, that the strategic work plan is going to be a six year strategic work plan, though Uganda is asking for five years, uh, but we want to ensure that we line it up with, uh, 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 with uh, our global demand. That's exactly. So we're going to develop a strategic work plan alongside uh, uh, with all our partners who will be there that we will be needing to collaborate and partner with in terms of uh, all projects, activities that we're going to target in, in 2022 and downwards. So therefore, uh, we need all this framework, with all our policies in place, and then set them and the request plus the funds request, we send them to the global team. The global team look at all what we have done and see if actually yes it is necessary and where it is needed to be adjusted and we are maybe more information to come in relevant uh, indicators to come in of course they can come in and then we can present that one now to any partner in terms of uh, developing or writing proposals remember Part of the, the framework that we are doing currently is also to develop different concepts or different project proposals. And one of it, Lloyd and Andrew just mentioned, is about the Abrahamic uh, tree, tree, uh, tree planting uh, project. That's, that is the first project that we are going to look at. And 
like what Lloyd was, was saying is true. And it's, it's not like we can move everywhere in the world or every country. We all know the global trend, uh, what the global situation. And so you are there in Kenya, of course. So uh, I'm here in Sierra Leone, other people are there in Congo and other places. So if we say we are promoting tree planting, all what we should ensure that we ensure that these trees are planted and we have with GPS the tree and of course, and we connect them to all our global trees of peace and reconciliation we are we are planting there. And then of course, all system to ensure that the process is sustainable. It is enhanced and sustainable and has a, 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 a sustainable result. So all those ones are going to be embedded within the project. This is like what you're saying, the issue of capacity building is going to be there to ensure that those people who are who are ex, who have expertise in training uh, XYC people, you know how to plant trees, how to manage trees, or how to manage the environment to make it safety, and all these ones will be coming there. So we we need all we need to do our work at home as a continent. What we are doing now. We prepare it and send it to the global team and say, okay, this is what we have done. So you can give us the technical advice and come in and then also you can help us to get partners so that we can get funding with the different projects, proposals that we are going to present. This is exactly the spectrum. This is the focus. So, uh, so we have to do our own homework first. Let's do it and ensure that uh, the global team, yes, can have somewhere to count on, can have somewhere to look at as what we are doing now. So we are proud of ourselves. We are moving slowly without funds. We don't have uh, fund support, but we are, uh, we are moving slowly. Because for instance, Uganda volunteer themselves to raise some money at local level to pay for the first phase of the uh, the registration. For me, that is a good one. Kudos to the Uganda team. And I believe other countries are also, uh, are also learning from that process. And they are doing a lot to ensure that uh, we have all these chapters legally operated or, or in operation. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. So that was a very long <laughs> explanation. But um, one, one of the things, for instance, um, we do is that we, because we are, we are, uh, we have a process of community engagement. Uh, so we are, uh, for instance, here, here in the GTA, um, doing these, these uh, engagement uh, processes of the planting of the trees and, and uh, the festivals and what, and we have a schedule. So we, we, we planned out our year uh, that we wanna do these events. So we begin engaging, especially because we are engaging with the UN Global Compact and all of these, these corporations and these, these uh, members and the companies, we can begin to promote their uh, businesses as well if they, if they decide to partner with us at the local level. So we promote them, they promote us. Um, we can, through their, their, uh, their um, I guess, budgets for uh, promoting their own businesses, we can get some funds to do our local projects. We don't need a lot of money to plant trees. Uh, it's, it's very little, but we can promote them so what we're doing at the local level, we engage with the members of the UN Global Compact that are in our own community. We will approach them, go to them and say, look, we are gonna be planting a tree of peace and reconciliation. Our tree of peace here in Toronto are going to be planted at this property uh, with these people uh, is also gonna be twinned with a tree, let's say in Sierra Leone or in Nigeria or in uh, Pakistan or wherever it might be. Um, we're going to promote your business at the same time as we're doing this, and you're going to get international 
national recognition, but also in our own community because we're partnered with a bunch of organizations in our own local community as well. So we can now create a campaign around that where we can create a template or let's say uh, uh, a, a proposal uh, that we can then bring to these, these uh, UN Global Compact members uh, to say, look, we are doing this, this thing, we can promote you. If you're, if you're willing to become part of our network, we can promote your, your business and your, your uh, solutions as well uh, as part of our campaigns, as, as a sponsor, let's say, to our activities. Uh, so that therefore we can get funding in that in that way as well. So if you're if you're looking at at, uh, at uh, frameworks for for uh, uh, creating the partnerships and the funding as well. Well, Lloyd, Lloyd is removing now into two hours yeah. and fifteen minutes. Lloyd, Perhaps Erwin uh, Erwin yeah. can have a chance to make yeah, a presentation. Lloyd, um, uh, yeah, Lloyd. I seem to me it seems to me that a lot of us is very anxious to start action. Lloyd to start program. Uh, so I, I would suggest that somehow we kind of get together, choose, uh, uh, take a, a few program. The one I noticed, for example, improving agricultural output, for example, so that uh, this is one of the, maybe a lot of uh, us in common. And um, uh, let us uh, find some location, maybe in Africa, maybe somewhere else in developing countries, and choose uh, some appropriate project um, that can impact uh, and benefit the people, the local people. We have to think maybe uh, family, family to family. Uh, I have, a, uh, you know, some of us uh, have some idea about what to do. So let's, let's get together, do brainstorming about what uh, particular solution that we can develop. I also has a, develop uh, dealing with the transparency. Uh, Andrew mentioned about transparency and anti-corruption. I'm, I'm more into prevention of corruption. So I have uh, some transparency uh, concept that I've developed that I would like to implement. So let us, for example, even though it is a small project, whether it is in Hawaii or uh, whether it is in Uganda, let, uh, I know it's, the funding is sometimes, it's very difficult, let's just, go as small, as small as possible if the funding is not available. And then we show, uh, we showcase the, the project so that others can take a look and copy paste later on. So uh, including this uh, concept of transparency, make sure we follow all the funding, we follow all the, the thing that uh, supposed to be uh, done uh, properly. What you, either I'm talking in the pollution, uh, uh, trying to prevent pollution, I'm talking in the prevent, uh, make sure this the quality of the bridge. If, some, if we're building up a bridge in the, in the village, make sure the quality is monitored, make sure the, uh, the quality and all the expenditure is uh, controlled. So let us do this in a comprehensive way. And uh, just one or two project, small project, if we don't have, if we don't have funding, let's do small project. Uh, I've been doing this in the agriculture of uh, Moringa Oliveira, seem to be a, a good uh, product because it's a, a, a plant that has a lot of nutrition, whether it is a vitamin, a protein or anything, which is good for people that need a lot of this uh, supplement. So let, let us, and it's easy to grow. In Africa, I think it has been shown that it helps uh, a clinic for baby growing. The first 1000 year, uh, days of the baby growing is very critical in the brain development. So uh, this might be one, one of the area. Maybe we were talking about improving the output of a agricultural product. Can we improve the, the rice production multiple, three times, four times, depending on the, maybe the technique. So what I mean is that let's do some action, put together, many of us have maybe a common problem or can, common uh, things we'd like to do and Let's find some funding. It doesn't have to be a lot of funding, the small one, as long as we can showcase that project later on. So those are my, my comments. Let's, let's do it as soon as possible. So Erwin, if you look in the chat, you'll find a link. It's for the Agri Diplomacy Group 
they're meeting on a regular basis. We just had a meeting yesterday, but the short answer is there are projects that are, are ongoing that do need just what you're offering to bring. I would ask you to register yourself with the group so that you can become involved. This is an ongoing collaborative for, it's headquartered out of Pakistan, but it does involve South Africa and other countries around the world. So you're certainly welcome to join and find out and participate. We look forward to having you. Thank you. Can you show me the link, please, Andrew? It's in the chat. I just put it there. It says okay. Okay. Um, agriculture register here. Okay, we'll do that. I'll, I'll really Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Back to you, Lloyd. So we, uh, definitely, we, we, we want to move, to move forward toward projects. So this year is where we start to do projects. So I, we have our Global Unity Network projects, which are the events that we're going to be doing because we are a promotional organization. So we promote uh, members of our network. And so these IGU summits are part of that, the, the coming together uh, to develop the network, but also part of the promotion. So that's why we, we usually have a guest speaker on every week uh, to uh, explain uh, what they are doing in their own local communities. Uh, we will do more and more of this uh, because we, we also want to launch eventually a, this T diplomacy initiative as well. Um, so we're going to be promoting all of our members through the network uh, as we move forward in the projects that you that you're doing, let's say. So we want to we want to help you as well uh, to implement projects. So the Global Unity Network itself is does not do projects in that sense. Our projects are the tree planting and, and the establishment of the of the uh, INBCs, those uh, uh, collaboratives in the local communities. Uh, where members like yourself would then be able to find partners to go ahead with actual uh, real projects. Uh, we are going to encourage and we're going we're to uh, encourage people to actually build these, these unity gardens, of course, and we're going we're gonna to leverage the experts that are in our network that uh, know how to teach people how to, how to build these unity gardens. Uh, but um, absolutely, uh, if, if you can uh, leverage uh, members of our network to find yourself, uh, establish yourself a team uh, in whatever country you might identify um, will assist you in, in, in uh, identifying those people uh, that want to move, move ahead with you to do an actual real, uh, let's say, agricultural project is what I'm trying to do, for instance, to assist you in uh, identifying certain technologies, let's say, for the for the uh, for the biochar, for the rice planting, or for uh, for other things, so that you can say, look, okay, we 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 want to do this, uh, but it's up to you to decide uh, those projects that you want to do, uh, where it's not our 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 members, let's say, um, who will will just magically come together. You're going to have to take that leadership role um, and, and develop uh, a, a plan to to undertake a specific project that you want to do. Thank you, Lloyd. Appreciate it. And and again, contact me anytime, and and we'll 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 try to put together the team to do whatever the project you want to do. Uh, but my projects, of course, are is to move ahead with the tree plantings uh, and developing of the network and uh, establishing of those interfaith neighborhood and business collaboratives as best we can. Again, uh, bringing people into uh, the the. Um, the UN Global Compact uh, in partnership with UN Global Compact members. Uh, eventually that's, that's I think where we're gonna be able to, to, to get much of the funding um, for well, us actually, to, be able to actually I, I, move forward with these local projects. Actually, I agree with you, Lloyd, and I think you and I should have a conversation about that sooner than later. But we're now two and a half hours into today, so I think it's time to move towards close. Absolutely. So uh, thank you all again uh, for coming on to our IGU Summit event. Uh, I'm going to be working on my presentation to see if I can shorten it as much as I can somehow uh, make it more streamlined as well. I, I, I did get a couple uh, uh, of the slides uh, mixed up today because I, I, re I re was trying to rejig things this morning back again to add more slides. And, uh, 
um, but we we are going to move forward and uh, continue to build things, uh, including our Indigenous Global Unity Network. Uh, I think that uh, we can launch that and move it move it into high gear this year um, to really uh, embrace the the, the uh, Indigenous movements around the world to to re-Indigenize our communities because this this uh, this was part of our 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 original mandate when we did our our very first uh sunlight spectacle event and i'm seeing juliet has her name up and, or her hand up uh perhaps she she wants to make a final uh, few remarks at the end here um no uh, i i hi hi everyone good evening uh, good morning to those it's still morning w wonderful presentation lloyd uh, it wasn't too long i find that today it was quite comprehensive. I was able to pick up things that I didn't pick up in the previous weeks. So I don't think the problem was the presentation. And thank you so much for that. Um, and you know, it's not a closing remark. It's more like um, I'm excited about this platform. And today I was able to pick up areas of synergy that we can do and in terms of programs and projects. I'm talking from South Africa. I do programs in the townships, so we too and other townships, uh, but it's quite exciting. Um, and uh, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, everyone who participates. Um, and I believe that uh, programs and projects and synergies um, that tie up to the global network will actually make a difference locally in the communities and in our countries. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm still excited and I honor the people who are pushing this initiative uh, and well done to the teams. Well, thank you. And Lloyd, I'm gonna take precedent next week and do a presentation on the United Nations Global Compact. So I'm asking your uh, understanding that I'm gonna take the first portion of next week, just to let you know. Okay, well, that would work. Uh, so uh, and that may give me a little bit more time to actually uh, streamline the presentation that I've been putting together. It's just so many slides now that I get a little bit confused when I have to shift them around. <laughs> um, we do have a guest speaker for next week, but we can always we can always probably fit both of them in. So we'll, I'm to my hand we'll, feature, we'll feature a presentation on UN Global Compact as well as uh, whoever our guest speaker is, which I forget right uh, now. But, uh, also, just, just to let you know, you know, what is possible is that we can also pre-record presentations. A lot of times our guests have challenges with bad bandwidth, but we can, if they pre-record the content, we can always then schedule time to show it. As I understand, we've had now several uh, successive opportunities for speakers that have not been able to join us. But if they go ahead and produce the presentation, we can show them on a regular scheduled basis. Just a note. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you. you. That, that's a good one. And, and uh, Lloyd, just to prepare the global team that uh, we are preparing to do uh, a formal presentation at the end of January. So, uh, as you're scheduling, you start to look around uh, on the last Thursday of uh, January. We're going to do a formal, uh, formal presentation of uh, continental programs and versus achievements mm -hmm. and versus uh, the way forward. Thank you. Okay, so let get in touch with me offline, Carlos, and we will try to schedule that in as well. I, I've, I've already started scheduling all the way through end of february but we can always shift people around and that's that should work oh that's fine thank you yeah okay so thank you everybody today for one more time for coming in uh for our our extra long uh i do summit event um we are building the network it is uh moving forward uh we are uh having conversations here in canada for for uh uh, this um, CTP program twinning exercise uh, to uh, move the um, whole agenda forward to the next stage where we're actually beginning to start doing building these projects. Uh, but again, we are focused very much on the education and training, the learning programs, um, delivery through the gardens, uh, the Unity Gardens. So uh, just keep in mind that uh, there are many things that can be done uh, but uh, in the end, it is it is a focus uh, very much on the 
on uh, learning how to be a uh, regenerative society um, as we uh, head toward uh, the uh, end of the sustainable development goal period uh, in around eight years or so. Um, I think the expectation given, given, the, given the COVID crisis that's ongoing um, is that uh, this will likely take longer to achieve than, than just eight years, uh, all of these sustainable development goals, just as, just as the MDGs were not uh, able to be implemented in the period that it was set aside for that. Things always take longer than well, expected. I, I do want to make a comment about that. One of the major differences between the Millennium Development Goals and the Sustainable Development Goals is quantifying the outcomes. The first eight Millennium Development Goals were just that, targets, or at least goals. But in the Sustainable Development Goals, what we now have are 169 targets. So those are the targets that are being quantified. And also, Lloyd, that's where I think we can engage our entire network in being more aware of how what we're doing affects one or more of those targets. So it's oh. our task, I think, to be more uh, open and forthcoming about the framework that we're working in. So that's why next week I'll take the time to go through all of those 17 sustainable development goals and the 169 targets. Yo, 169 targets. Okay. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so that, that's that, that would be excellent. Thank you very much. And yes, that should uh, wrap it us up for today. So thank you all. and. Um, you so you, we'll see you next week. It's awesome. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.